Hello, party people, and welcome to Office Hours, SQL Dev DBA. Good morning uh, over in Twitch chat there. So I am supposed to be on a plane right now. Let me tell you a short little story. So last night we get a text from close friends of ours here in Vegas. Uh, they had just arrived in Mexico and our the favorite hotel down there in Cabo San Lucas upgraded them from a one bedroom uh, room to a three bedroom suite. And uh, so they texted us, they're like, hey, if you can get down here as fast as possible, we have a long weekend planned in Cabo, you can stay for free. I'm like, great, that's fantastic, let's do it. Immediately we go and book tickets. The only uh, airline that I could get out on was Southwest, because uh, the airlines are such a mess right now with the crowd strike problem. So we booked tickets for uh, taking off this morning at 5.30 a.m. on Southwest, getting into Cabo at like 11 a.m. this morning. So we frantically pack, we get the dog all set up, get the dog's paperwork and everything ready to go. And I go to call, we wake up at 1.30 a.m. this morning in order to get ready for the flight. And uh, I go to call Southwest because I'm like, oh, yesterday I forgot to uh, mention that I have a pet, that I'm bringing a dog with us. And Southwest is like, you can't actually, we don't allow you to take dogs on international flights. I'm like, oh no, everything else, every other airline was full. There was no workaround on it. Our dog is not a service dog. It was like uh, three o'clock in the morning when we're figuring this out. We were, had to be uh, taking off at 5.30 a.m. We couldn't get him into any of the pet hotels here in Vegas. None of our friends who are nearby, we didn't want to text them at like 3 a.m. and say, hey, can you do us a favor and take care of Beanie for the next couple of days? So thankfully, Southwest has a really cool uh, refund policy. They let you refund flight tickets for free. Doesn't cost you anything up until 10 minutes before boarding, which is really cool. Um, but it was at 3 a.m. this morning when we we're figuring all this out, and Eve and I had already packed. Everything was ready to go, uh, and we had to text our friends back and say, sorry, we can't actually make it. And we didn't even sleep well last night because of the rush with packing and getting everything ready. So now Eve is conked out in the home theater. Our home theater is amazing for sleeping because it's completely black paint, black walls, blackout curtains. Uh, hi, Stillgard. Um, and uh, so it's great for sleeping. She's in there now sleeping. I played video games in there for a while until she went to sleep. And now I'm uh, off in my office doing work stuff because I, you know, what else? Uh, and I was looking at the poll gab queue, and there are a bunch of questions around professional development. And I thought, oh, I'll do a, a themed uh, a one around that before my, my favorite bagel place opens at 6 a.m. So I'm like, well, got some time to kill. Let's go through your top voted professional development questions. Um, so the first one is uh, from, let's see here, let me click the button here, asking for a friend. Let me click again on poll gab because it didn't quite get my link in there. Click that in. Asking for a friend says, as a prod DBA, should I know what data is available in my database? So it all comes down to there are only so many hours in the day. This is why part of why I thought about the professional development uh, stream for today. There are only so many hours in the day, and there are also other things that you have to learn. You have to learn technical things for your career going forward. You have to take care of your friends and family. You have to take care of your own physical and mental health. So whenever you're faced with a question of, should I learn blank, there are always gonna be people out there on the internet who say, of course you should learn it, it's so important. You know, but they're probably typing from their mom's basement and their, their home life is in a shambles, their physical uh, health is in a shambles. You have to figure out where you're gonna draw lines. So what I would do is ask your boss, I would sit down with your manager and say, all right, here are some of the things that I'm thinking about learning over the next three months or six months, which of these would you prioritize? And then that way, maybe there's something that's much more important to them that you focus on learning. 
Let's see. Uh, next up, Oracle DBA asks, Hey Brent, I appreciate all the effort that goes into your office hour streams. I was looking at your channel to find the older streams from, say, San Diego. Did you delete them? No, they're all back there. It's just that I do one to two office hours a week. Uh, so you're probably going to have to go back 100, 200 uh, office hours to find when I lived in San Diego. There's also office hours from Iceland, too, as well, if you go further back. Uh, let's see here. Going back through the professional development ones, Dirk says, here's a non-technical question. Is there a book or movie that you've read or watched recently that you would recommend? Oh, you, you, the Fallout TV series. The Fallout TV series was so good. I don't play the video games. I, the only video game I ever play is Dead by Daylight. Um, but the Fallout game universe is so good. And the Fallout TV show is so good. It's only one season. I can't remember if it's eight or ten episodes, but Amazon's already signed to do another season. It was phenomenal. Um, in terms of books, uh, the one that I usually recommend people is Wool. Uh, Wool, the book, W-O-O-L, is uh, phenomenal. It's a short sci-fi book, um, and it's part of a much longer series. Apple TV turned it into a TV series called Silo. I haven't watched the TV series yet, but it's completely different from the book. The books are phenomenal. Can't say enough good stuff about them. Start with wool, and if that doesn't hook you within the first like 10 pages, let alone the cliffhanger at the end of the book, then give it up. But that the cliffhanger's fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Next up in the non-technical list, Mr. Sequel Seek says, what do you do to help reset your brain and refocus during a workday when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed? When I'm working with uh, clients live, because very often what I'm doing is working face-to-face -face with clients live, what I do is I take a 15-minute bio break every 45 minutes. So 45 minutes after the hour, we start at the top of the hour, and 45 minutes in, I go, okay. And I, I will use a little timer either on my uh, watch or on my desktop. And after 45 minutes, I'll say, okay, look, we're going to stop here. Some people probably need to pee. Some people uh, need to go refresh their drink. We're going to take a 15-minute bio break. And I also say to the clients, I encourage you to walk away from the computer. I know you think you don't need to pee. You think you don't need to walk. I would encourage you to walk away from the computer because walking away and resetting your eye focus and just stretching your legs helps you think about, are we on the right track or not? So doing that continuously makes sure that people don't get too amped up on any one particular issue. When I'm working by myself, just on scripts, training materials, research, whatever, it's going to sound crazy, but I like to do chores around the house. So I like to go, you know, every 45 minutes, I'll go drop and do the laundry, the dishes, uh, organize things in the kitchen, you know, just any little hand, go walk the dog through the back of the yard and just walk around, um, but something to disconnect and walk away. And I, I feel like you people who telecommute really need that 45 minute breaks. Uh, Single Dev DBA says it sounds similar to the Pomodoro style. I used to, uh, when I'm doing query tuning, I used to talk about this a lot. I keep a 20-minute um, timer, is like technically 25 minutes, uh, on my desk, and I flip it whenever I'm working. And I love the way it looks and that it's very analog. It gives you a gentle break. Whereas if you'd have a, like a half hour timer on your computer or a 20 minute, it goes beep, beep, beep. It breaks your focus. You lose track of things. Whereas this, I find that I just naturally look down every couple of minutes and there's not as much pressure because it doesn't tell you that there's exactly like 16 minutes and 22 seconds left. It's just, a, oh, I got some sand left. I'll continue to keep going on it. I love these things. You can get them off of Amazon. Uh, they're just wonderful, especially the, you know, the big ornamental style ones. <laughs> Still guard says, uh, Brent is like the Captain Picard of DBA's wise man with a lot of experience, has a better haircut though. No, I actually need to get a haircut today too. Uh, my hair is kind of a mess. I adore uh, the character of Jean-Luc Picard and also the actor who plays him. What's the British guy's name? It's going to drive me crazy uh, that I can't remember now. Golly, 
Jean-Luc Picard played by, now I gotta look it up, Patrick Stewart. Thank you, Heckles. Pa Heckles uh, nails it. Oh, thank you for the Kha'Zix, uh, subscribed for nine months straight. Jim Van Allen, subscribed for 13 months. Uh, for those of you with Amazon Prime, uh, you can you get a free Twitch subscription so you don't have to see any ads uh, if you link your Amazon account with Twitch. Amazon owns Twitch. Uh, so then you get one free subscription that you can use on any channel, and it prevents all the ads on that channel, which is kind of cool. All right, let's see here. Next up in the professional dev list, let's see here. This one is kind of kind of pro dev and kind of not. Uh, Kremir says, will AI soon make it practical for a company to migrate off one RDBMS and onto another? Today, you could copy a query and the related database schema into something like ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini and say, hey, I've got this uh, schema, could you, and this schema, database schema and this query, can you refactor this query to make it compatible with, say, Postgres or whatever? The, the problem is, is it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to do it manually, or you're going to have to write a tool that will read a query, pull the associated query, or pull the associated schema, all the underlying tables and views, and then send that over to the API. It's not something that's like intuitive or quick. And then you're still going to have to test all of the code because, of course, AI does hallucinate. Um, I use uh, AI all the time. All the time. I have subscriptions to Chat GPT, Claw, Anthro. Anthro uh, Claude, Gemini, uh, Cohere, and I throw technical stuff in there all the time just to keep an eye on what the state of it is. It's great too for stuff like blog posts. It, is, it, is it wonderful for <coughs> forklifting an entire application from one database to another? Not yet, unfortunately. And soon, of course, you know, everything is coming soon. Uh, let's see here. Next up we have coming down through the list. Future Blogger says, Hi Brent, I was interested in your post on the future of the Stack Overflow data dump. Do you think that Stack Overflow's direction of travel, their corporate vision, will make it harder for people to use the existing databases uh, for their blog posts and presentations? No, the existing databases are totally fine. They were licensed under uh, Creative Commons, so you're fine there. But all the ones up until now, those are all covered by that. Right now, Stack Overflow is making decisions on the next versions. I would argue that you don't really need the next versions. Stick with the current ones that are out there. They're more than large enough, hundreds of millions of rows. So it's more than good enough for things like blog posts and presentations. I thought the same thing. And it, real, the reality is, is that I haven't updated my training databases since 2018. The 2018 copies that are out there uh, that are Creative Commons are all more than good enough for my training classes. So I'm sticking with those two as well. Uh, next up, Venkat says, what is your opinion of the recent Azure outage? Did it impact your clients? Because on Thursday night, uh, July 17th or whatever it was, two things hit around the same time, the Azure outage and the CrowdStrike outage. Because both of those hit at around the same time, the Azure outage, while big, you know, the entire central region went down, got overshadowed by how bad the CrowdStrike outage was. I didn't hear from a single client of mine who went down because of Azure's uh, central region outage. All the clients that I heard from were all CloudStrike related. And it was also kind of uh, awesome because I actually got comments on LinkedIn saying, hey, thank you for telling us years ago that to uninstall CloudStrike from the database servers, because SP Blitz actually warns you about that, my open source uh, health check script. Um, so thank you for uh, warning us to remove that so our database servers weren't a victim of CrowdStrike, but all usually the Active Directory controllers, uh, uh, everything else, app servers were all affected, so you're still kind of screwed. Uh, next up, T. Earl Grey Hot, I get that Picard reference there, um, says, have you done any work in other markets where the compensation standards are much lower? If so, did you adopt your rates to that market? No. So I have to pay my bills in US dollars. 
like I have rent in US dollars, my phone bill, my car payments, things like that are all US dollars. Um, so unfortunately, I can't adapt my rates lower just because someone else has a lower cost of living. Kind of a bummer. Um, uh, have I ever had clients ask for that? Yeah, absolutely. But the reality is, is that I got to pay my own bills. I, both Eve and I have talked about moving to another country where the cost of living would be lower, something like Thailand or even, believe it or not, China. Uh, but uh, realistically, it's probably not going to happen for years. Uh, and he also says, uh, if so, how do, would you go about saying what a fair compensation rate would be? I just wouldn't go down that road. Um, uh, I've even had companies where it's the same standard of living, like Europe, uh, where they've said because of just the time zones or political hassles that some clients aren't willing to jump that bridge. They're like, would you get up at you know 8 p.m. and work until 5 a.m.? Nope, sorry, that's I'm not working overnight. Let's see here. That's it on the professional development questions. Uh, how many, how long did we go for for our, oh, we did go for uh, quite a while. So I'll go ahead and uh, close the webcast there. Oh, and that's good. Oh, my, my uh, coffee shop, my bagel shop opens in 10 minutes. Perfect. So I can go downstairs, hop in a little speedster and uh, go zip off down there. So hope you all had fun and learned something. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves, especially uh, for those of you who had to deal with the crowd strike and uh, Azure outages this week. That was so tough on us. So many people uh, hang in there and I will see you all at the next office hours. Adios.